All right, it's time for entertainment, and Ms. G has joined me. So I talked about Jim Ike's issue, mm -hmm. but apparently that's not the only thing we have. We, exactly. have, we have quite a number of juicy stories. We have stories. lots of juicy stories. Okay, today. let's 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 get it. Okay, right away. so it happens that we thought that once the comments from Kalkasi uh, had gone viral, you know, people would just you know rubbish it as one of those comments and let it slide and let it slide. But the Honourable Member for Parliament uh, or for uh, Kumbugu, Ras Mubarak, says the Privileges Committee must do the needed thing. He says he remembers the case of Black Rasta. If Black Rasta was dragged before Parliament, same needs to be done for Kwakasi. He says that it's becoming too much that people just, you know, drag the names of the honorable members into disrepute. Something needs to be done to serve as a deterrent to other people so they don't just wake up and say anything they want to say okay. about members of parliament. Because Kwa had said that, you know, uh, he knows some members of parliament who smoke weed. He says he needs to come and identify these members. Yes. So it looks like he says they're on break. They'll be back in October. And once they're back, he hopes that the Privileges Committee would invite Caucasus to Parliament. Okay. So it's, it's not exactly fatal at this point mm -hmm. if uh, the MP is saying, essentially, he wants to propose yes. that he's invited. So it tells that he's going to raise it on the floor of Parliament then. Because, you know, the Black Rasters case was just somebody who had read the issue in the papers yeah. that raised on the floor of Parliament. And then it led to an invitation. October is, is, is quite some time away. Who knows? Well, he may just change his mind. Well, but lawyer Gary Nimaku says that, you know, this can also become just an irresponsible comment. You know, there's no evidence. The fact that somebody can brag that they smoke weed, you need to find evidence that you've seen weed on them. The substance needs to be identified and declared okay. as weed. Otherwise, he just says that irresponsible comments from Kwakasi until there's evidence of him smoking then you can just say he's bragging. Okay. Mm. All right. Yeah. So away from the Kwakasi issue, you know that I told you uh, Kaki had been signed on to Xylophone because Xylophone had welcomed her to a new world, which suggested so well. Kaki said no, she had not signed. Okay. She's not signed. That's to, interesting mm -hmm. because, yes, she had not made any comments. She yes. had not put out any posts. Mm -hmm. All she said was that she had... She was breaking mm -hmm. with her management. Exactly. And... Uh, and then we saw the xylophone that posted something mm -hmm. on, on their social media handle True. suggesting that they had uh, had, a, had a deal mm -hmm. or a gig with her. It yes. out no, right. nothing at all. Well, she's now saying that she left extra large because, you know, uh, she had a six-year contract with them. After six years, she wanted to be setting, a certain khaki, which she's not, and she's not impressed. So she decided to move on. Now she's grown and all that. But Xylophone Media says they have two social media handles. What happened is that they were just welcoming her after they heard she has left extra large to so her new world. Nothing indicating that they had signed her on. <laughs> but do, we have, do we have that post? Can we, can yes, we put up yes, that yes, post? Yes, yes, we have the post. I mean, how do you welcome somebody? To I mean, you're welcoming world. somebody into your fold. Mm -hmm. With your handle, because into a new world. What's the new world? Well, they said just when they heard that. So that's the PRO. It says just when they heard that uh, she had left extra large, they thought to welcome her into a new world. So they have the picture of Kaki there. I'm not quite oh. getting it. But well, anyway. but you know, sometimes, you know, they try to test the waters to see if people are for it. Because the, the questions people began to ask is that, can Kaki write her own songs? Who is going to write for her when she goes to Xylophone? How does she manage as an artist sign on to Xylophone? No, but it's okay. I mean, there, there are lots of artists who don't write their own songs. Mm -hmm. So it's okay for them to, for others to write for them to perform. Yeah. Well... I don't think Xylophone wants that. But again, they say if they think that uh, she would augment their team, definitely they will sign her. So there's a probability that she might get signed onto Xylophone. Oh, but yeah, for now, she's not signed onto Xylophone. So you were mentioning when I came in the issue about Lydia Forsen and. Oh, yes. Hmm. Lydia Forsen. Yes. Apparently, she has put out some statement mm -hmm. and uh, she's waded into this debate, NDC debate, yes, about who's uh, the founder of the NDC. And, uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. there's quite a many. She also comes in and she um, hits very hard. Hard, yes. Because, because he's. Mm, 
tagged her once i think one of the time uh, there was a time she posted something and he tagged her a prostitute back then and she's saying that now you're tagging valerie as well so it means that any woman that speaks you want to tag that woman you know so that's that's why he's speaking he's not too impressed that you know she had to you know come in he had to come in when Valerie spoke about uh, all the things that were happening or are happening in the NDC. So that's uh, Lydia Fawson's worry. She says, you know, Lydia Fawson actually speaks against anything she thinks demeans women. So she thought that this was not the right one for her. Right, but I actually mm -hmm. think that it's about the way she goes about it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I think she, she writes in an interesting way. Very I, interesting I, I was way. reading a bit of it. Mm -hmm. I, was, I was enjoying it. I don't know if... Uh, David, you can pull up Lydia Forsen's uh, Facebook post, but I'm going to share with you okay. just a bit of uh, what, what uh, she he, she's had out. to say. Mm -hmm. She says, um, Dear Delacofi, remember me? And then goes on to say, Ah, what's the difference? Okay, you'll actually have it on it. Okay. Dear Delacofi, remember me? Ah, what a difference three years makes, huh? My hair is longer, your party is in opposition, and you're now speaking against the very person you condemned me to the brothel over. Hmm. Ah, what a life. I wouldn't lie. I'm gloating right now. Focus, Lydia, focus. <laughs> okay, this is going to be a long one because it's been marinating for three years. But first, a little background, shall we? About three years ago, like many Ghanaians, I was frustrated by the rampant power cuts, economy, and many other issues in the country. And that frustration led me to write an open letter to the now ex-president John Mahama. A letter many said was disrespectful and an insult to his leadership and people agreed or disagreed depending on what side of the political divide they belong to at the moment. However, I was confident in the president's communication skills and expected him to understand the extent, the intent of the letter. For the NDC sympathizers who disagreed with my letter, they took it upon themselves to attack me on every available platform with Delacofi leading the pack. Here's his response to my letter. Anyway, we can't go into all of that, but uh, I thought I should just read yeah. just a bit of it to you. But we're going to make it available on our Facebook page as well, Join Us on TV, and um, you can get to read for yourself. Because indeed, it gets to a point where some of the things she's... she's She's written. Mm -hmm. I can't read. You can't read, definitely. I, you I can't, can't read, read them on you. air. Yeah, I mm. can't now, read. not on national television. Not on national, not television. On international television. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so quickly, uh, we've done talked about Gary and all that. So let's talk about what you introduced uh, the Ike. issue of Jim Ike. Now, it wasn't only Jim Ike. I don't okay. know if you know Charlie Boy. Does they call him Grandpapa or Father? Now, he's, he's a musician. I grew up knowing Charlie Boy as a musician. Now, he's become like a lord or a don where he has young men, you know, who virtually worship him and believe that he's their godfather. So, together with Jim Ike, decide to go on the protest. Now, when they went on that protest, before we saw Jim Ike's video, now, they shot at them and uh, Charlie Boy fainted. Who shot at them? No, the police shot at them because they were on a protest and uh, people shot at them. The police shot at them and Charlie Boy fainted. I saw the video where they were trying to revive him. And now we see a video of Jamaica saying that either you resume or you resign because for a long time they have been living without a president. And he makes reference to what CNN had to post about Nigeria's president uh, uh, being uh, missing a away, away yeah. from office. So here's Jamaica. You see, what we're asking for is simple. We're not saying that we individually came here to elevate our life. We're saying collectively enough is enough. Yes. You cannot run a country from outside another country for 94 days. Yes. It's not possible. Yes. No. no. We've turned to the caricature of the world. Has anybody seen CNN of late? Did you listen to what they had to say about a great nation? We were once the giant of Africa. Mm. Now we're the joke of Africa. Mm. It is time we wake up. Yeah. If your mumu never do, I won't do it. Do. 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 Yes. Yeah. My brother, it is not possible. It is only in this country a president would try to run a whole country like this from another country. I mean, it, it, don't we have shame anymore? What is going on? What is going on? Okay, so we are, we are gathered here this morning to say enough is enough. Yes. It is a simple thing. Yes. It is a simple thing. Our mantra is one. Our decision is one. Yes. Unequivocally, we are saying that the president will either resign or resume. Yes. 
Mm. Okay, so it's very interesting we're getting this at this point. You know, just today, Kofi Annan, the former UN Secretary General, was, was saying that uh, we're overly polite. Africans are typically overly polite and uh, very respect respectful. Mm -hmm. It turns out that the Nigerians just wanted no, to prove him wrong. No, they think that it's a time for the young ones. I'm not sure how the older folks feel about comments like this, but uh, can we see Charlie Boy quickly before I go? For those who do not know Charlie, Charlie Boy, okay, so that's Charlie Boy okay. in, in your shorts, and that's the man who fainted. He is actually the godfather in charge of this protest, and uh, unfortunately... If he was shot, probably it was uh, maybe rubber bullets or yes, maybe tear gas. No, the shot in the air. So, you know, they were running for their life, not like the shooting he him. Yeah, they're running for their life and he fainted in the process. So, that'll yeah. be for entertainment. We okay. hope that uh, Buhari much. gets to resume or he resigns. <laughs> Thank you very much. <laughs>